Hello there, surfers. Today I'm going to try and address a question that I've been getting in the comments section around this sword right here. This is the Mini Katana Kaizen, and it is a $900 sword from Mini Katana. I recently reviewed it, and the question I've been getting around it is, is it the same thing as the sword below? This is the 1095 from Shadow Dancer, or 1095 Katana from Shadow Dancer. They used to be called Dragon Sword, or they were when I reviewed the product. I'll link both videos in the description down below, but most of it is fixated around this one. I reviewed this in conjunction with the Hakusai, another higher-end model from Mini Katana, um, but the question is really around these two products, and so that's what I'm gonna focus on. So this isn't a review, I've reviewed both of them. Check the links in the description if you wanna watch them. I'm gonna focus on what is the difference between the two, go over it and show it. I should have done that in the video. It was not the best decision of me to do that. It dawned on me that these Subas were the same and they were probably similar swords, but I focused on a different comparison and hopefully this video rectifies that. The punchline, incidentally, for those of you that don't have long attention spans, is that no, they are not the same. However, they are very, very very similar, and I would venture a guess that most people are going to find this one, the $470 version, to be a better value. Fundamentally, all of the special things that you don't really get anywhere else are present on the $470 one and the $900 one. This has some better stuff, you're going to hear about it, uh, but is it that much better? Is it a couple hundred dollars better? I don't know. Um, to me, yes, <laughs> but I think to a lot of people, it's going to be good enough on this one right here, and most of the way there. So I do think the differences are going to be are, are worth money and would cost money, and I don't think they're the same thing, but they are very, very similar, and this one probably is the better value between the two. I'm gonna go over that, but that's the punchline of the video. Probably should have saved it. You know, I don't know. Listen all the way. <laughs> Even if you don't have the attention span for it. Helps me in the algorithm. Uh, but that's what uh, the punchline is. I'm gonna go over all the stuff, and then I'm gonna show it to you. So, uh, fittings. The Fuchikashira and the Minuki and the Suba, they're the same, as far as I can tell. So, I would actually say that the 1095 blade has an earlier casting, probably, and it looks just a little crisper. The patina, on the Kaizen is better, and it's a little less like hodgepodgey, but fundamentally they are the same. And I can make out similar levels of detail between them, and I would say if you weren't being really, really, really picky, these are uh, the, the same fittings effectively. And so is the Suba, and I think that's what probably drew most of the attention, is that the Suba and the Fuchikashira all look the same, and apart from the colors, it looks like just a, a kind of a reskin, if you will. But there are some other differences. So the Ito, at least on this example, um, the $470 one is better. <laughs> so either one is good, but the Ito is a little bit tighter on the $470 one. Other things in terms of transitions, in terms of build quality, uh, this one has a little bit better at wasting, a little bit better in terms of the fit and finish, very, very minor. The Samegawa skin is also just a little bit better quality on this one. It's like half a point higher though. The nodules are a little bit bigger, but fundamentally very, very similar stuff. I like the shaping on this more. The same is a little bit better. The patina on the fittings is a little bit better. All very small things. The Ito is a little bit tighter here. In fairness though, this was an option. You had to pay more money to get it with uh, schmancier Ito, and so I guess it's not a surprise, but this one I know that was an option that was specifically added to this, and it cost more money to do it. So anyway, but it's tighter. So if I move on from there, the Seppa both appear to be copper. The Suba looks a little different, but that's because one is reversed and maybe on the other way. They could look basically the same. They appear to be made of the same material. They see, appear to be patinated the same way. Um, one doesn't appear to be better really than the other. If I move up to the Habaki, well, one has a copper Habaki, and so this is a difference. The Habaki on the uh, Kaizen is a better Habaki. They are both shaped, in fairness, really quite well, so they have a little bit more dimension than you would typically expect. Um, either one does. I would say that the Shadow Dancer sword is a little bit simpler, and you know, it, it does more or less the similar things. I would still say this is a really good Habaki, but one is made of copper, one is made of brass, and I would say the copper one is a little bit better done. It could just be that they're made by the same people and they got a little better at making habaki because this is older. But I digress, the habaki is nicer on this one, nicer material, but also nicer lines, nicer grinding, um, nicer little thises and that. Uh, here, the spine sticks out a little bit more than it does on this. Uh, 
fundamentally though very very similar I would just say that there's a little bit better Habaki here either one of them have really good Habaki though but this one I would say is a little bit better if I go to the scabbards more or less they're the same thing um, they have Ishime finish this one is brown uh, this one is black this one has a little bit thicker paint on it I can feel like a splatter pattern that's a little different but fundamentally the same thing they have similar Koiguchi they have similar Shitadome that are glued in or not glued in I should say similar levels of Segeo um, this one the Kaizen is a little bit thicker in terms of the way the Saya tapers both of them taper though which is also not common in this <laughs> In either short, it's not common to see that. Uh, so both of them taper. The Shadow Dancer one, though, gets a little bit on the thin side. Uh, this one is tapers, but is still has a little bit better thickness. I like the scabbard on the Kaizen more than I like it on the Shadow Dancer. This one feels like it was done just a little bit, a little bit too much. Maybe that's just this example, but I digress. Point is, I like the thickness on here, but fundamentally they both have kind of a plastic rim around the Koiguchi, a wooden Kurigata, the same Shitado nearest I can tell, a little cap at the end. This one just, while it tapers, it doesn't thin out so much. Uh, they both have similar kind of amounts of noise, I guess I would say, and tension as well is also very, very similar. So either one from a, from a practitioner standpoint is, is pretty solid. Uh, I went out and actually practiced with both of these again. They feel different, um, not a huge amount different, but they do feel different. So I'm gonna dispense with the scabbards over here. Don't worry, I'm throwing it on the carpet, but I just don't want to trip over wires, but the scabbards are going to be okay. All right, so I'm going to talk about the blades now. And as you see them out here, they probably look the same. They have very similar features. Incidentally, I've linked in the description down below the measurements. If you're keen on knowing what those are and comparing them, they're there. I take them when I grab the reviews. It's easy for me to paste them in there. But uh, what's the same? Well, the size is effectively the same. The shape is very, very similar. I would say there's a little difference in, in kind of shape and how much curvature it has, but small. Um, there's a little difference in thickness, which you can probably see more clearly from the description down below. Um, they both came really, really sharp and they both came with excellent polishes and really, really good polishes that are uncommon to see, which probably adds to the reason that people think they were made by the same folks. And they well could be, but uh, uncommonly good polishes, whether it be in the $470 or $900 variety. Both came similarly sharp. They both have similar tips. They both have uh, an actual good polishing on the Kasaki, which is uncommon to see, really crisp Yakote. So where is the difference? Well, one, if I point to what's better, which I think is maybe the, uh, the root of what people are asking for, there's more opaqueness along the Shinogi here. So where this bevel starts and comes down, the the polishing along this plane is better and the lines on it are crisper. So if I look at the Shinogi, this line that's kind of running here, it's crisper and more defined. This is a little bit softer, not to say it isn't a good polish, but it is softer. The Yakote and Kasaki look very similarly polished to me, um, but I can also see that the Hamon, the Seguha is a little wider on the $470 version, the 1095 from Shadow Dancer. It's a little smaller on this guy here, but it also seems to be a, just a little bit more consistent. And that isn't something that I can necessarily say, well, I can say it's better. I know it's harder to do to make a really clean straight line. And the cleaner and straighter it is, the, the harder it is to get done. This wavers a little bit more, but not substantially. Um, I would say that this is also potentially variation that you might see. I don't know if every example is going to have as crisp a line as this one does, or maybe they're even, even better. But I would say the Seguha is a little straighter on this than it is on this. If I look at the spine, the Mune is a little bit more defined as well, and it has less ripples along the spine here. So this is an area that doesn't often receive the same amount of attention in the polish, and as long as it's shiny, that's usually good enough. But there is um, just a little bit more crisp edge along the spine. It's not perfect, but it has more attention <laughs> than this one does. And so what I fundamentally see here is that the polish seems to be just a little bit better. And I 
don't know how much better. I don't know how many steps better or what the, the cost difference is, but I do see that the lines are a little bit crisper and cleaner. There's a little bit more opaque nature. It seems like less, less of it was kind of buffed, if you will, and more done by hand uh, attentively. And so that is, is more or less what I'm seeing in the blade. If I were to equate the two, I would say that this seems like the, the next step up in terms of polishing. There's not a huge difference because either way, they're polished in such a way that it looks very, very similar. It's not some kind of like one is a goofy reverse polish or hardly done, um, but a little crisper line, a little cleaner on the Mune, um, a little more even on the, the Hamon are, are really minor things, but things that still take probably a significant amount of time and probably more than I can give it credit. So. That's the, the kind of stuff that I'm seeing in terms of difference. Now, I don't know um, if there are differences in the Nakago, the Tang, but they do appear to be fundamentally very similar. Uh, one thing I didn't note in either review is that the Makugi is set off at a slant. So the Makugi is this little pin that is right here that holds the, the item together, and it's set in at a slant, which is the way it's typically supposed to be done. <laughs> And either way, they are done. And they're also done at like a, well, a very, very, well, the reverse of each other, actually. So one is slanted down, the other is slanted up. But both of them go in at an angle, which is better. It forces things together a little bit more. Both of them actually have that. I'm probably contributing to the idea that they're made by similar hands. But one is better, and that is more or less the stuff that I can see in terms of difference visibly. Now, in terms of feeling, the uh, the Shadow Dancer sword feels stouter in the hand. So this one feels a little bit more lively, a little bit more nimble. I don't know exactly, I think it's a little thicker in some places. If I had to guess, the Shadow Dancer is a heavier sword. It doesn't feel as lively in the hand. It still feels really good, but it doesn't feel as, as nimble and lively as the Kaizen. Um, feels very, very similar, I'll give it that. If, but if I close my eyes, they do feel like slightly different swords. The Ito is not, it's not a huge difference, but it is tighter here. And when I feel it moving around, if I try to move it, I definitely can, and this feels a little bit more solid. Shaping on this one, though, my hand index is a little bit better. So these could just be run-of-the-mill differences that you're gonna see in any sort. It could be that, uh, the differences that I'm spotting here are just part of variation and that they are the same sort. But I would contest that that this sword right here, the Kaizen, has some more features than the Shadow Dancer 1095 sword. Not a huge amount, but I would say that there are some differences that are present and those differences, particularly in the polish, take time and therefore add cost. And I think the objective with Mini Katana, if I was guessing, was to make a really nice sword that was around about $1,000. And so they had a really nice polish put on it. The Shadow Dancer one here, I'm not sure exactly what the idea was, but making a sword with a really awesome awesome polish that is affordable, and I think they did that here. And I think either one are still really compelling offerings, either one are nice. I would certainly say that this polish is probably gonna be good enough for most folks, and some of the uh, things that I've outlined as differences are probably not gonna be compelling enough for most people to say there's a meaningful difference between the two. I see it, but I don't know if everyone else is going to, and I don't, well, even if you can, I just don't know that you're gonna appreciate spending a couple hundred dollars more. It's also worth pointing out though that there's a few more differences between the two. And one is the way that Mini Katana sells them. So you get a box, it's prettier. I don't find value in that stuff, but some people do. You get a stand, uh, you don't with the Shadow Dancer one. Some people are gonna find value in that. I don't, I have to put up lumber racks to hold the swords that I have. I, a small stand doesn't do much for me. Um, you get a, a nice bag with a mini katana piece and also if you go on the site and like click buy, depending on when you do it, you might get some freebies and tchotchkes and some other stuff, does that add value to you? Also, you're buying uh, in the US with a place that has a return policy. So does that add easy and ease and convenience? I think Shadow Dancer does free shipping. I'm not 100% sure, so I, they're probably relatively equivalent there, but they're not necessarily 100% the same thing. Either way, I, I think there are differences in the product by themselves. Whether or not that's enough value or difference to, quant to, to justify the price difference is a, is a different question. And I would say that for the most part, no. <laughs> uh, the, 
the stand, the box, and all that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily do it for me. Um, this is an incredibly rich value for a sword from this Shadow Dancer piece right here. Um, I still think, though, that the Mini Katana is an absolutely excellent sword. I really like it. If, I had, if you had to ask me which one do I want, if they were both the same price, I'd pick this one. Uh, knowing that there's a couple hundred dollars difference and that some of that is going into you know, some fluffy stuff that I don't necessarily care about and I'm not necessarily nervous about buying anything from China uh, directly and having it shipped, it, they always seem to come to me safe. So the return policy side of things doesn't, doesn't really phase me. Uh, this would be the, the better value between the two in my mind. So anyway, uh, that's the comparison that I have. Hopefully it clears some stuff up. Hopefully it helps you decide where your money is at or where it is better spent. Also, I want to say good eye, sword community. I am, um, I'm kind of tickled that people were able to call me out on this and that I'm doing this video now making this comparison. I noted that it's an oversight that I didn't do it in the first place, but I'm kind of tickled that the videos I make are one clear enough where you can discern that they look the same and also that people pay close enough attention to the stuff I say to say, hey, what's up with this? These, these things look the same. And hopefully the video that I've made now, it came quick enough to help people decide if it's worth their money or not and to, to understand the differences between uh, the two swords, at least from the same person that presented them in the first place. But um, I'm curious about a few questions if you made it to this, uh, this part of the video and are willing to donate your time in the comments section. One, do you see a difference in the sword? I, I don't mean is it worth it, but do you at least see a difference between the two apart from the colors of the, the Ito and the scabbard? Um, and two, do you think the difference is worth it? Uh, the difference being not only kind of what I've outlined in terms of the products themselves, but also that Mini Katana is selling stuff out of the US. They might have a better or easier return policy if you have some grievance, that you buy something that comes with a prettier box and that you might get some extra accoutrement or tchotchkes or something like that with it. Um, does that stuff make it compelling to buy? Um, what difference, if you do see one, would you place the value on? How much would you like to see this cost in terms of difference? Uh, anyway, just some, uh, some of your thoughts on that would be appreciated. That's all I've got though. Again, thank you for noticing. Thank you for bringing up the question. I hope this was helpful. Cheers and thanks for watching.